Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa, and today, I get this question all the time. I know my scales, I know the cage system. My buddy David was telling me this the other day. I know the scales, I know the cage system, I know all this stuff, but how do you actually make music? How do you solo? Like, how do you start to become melodic? And I was thinking to myself, you know, let's take the Gilmore approach. One of the best, most melodic, I, you know what? I always ask players when the first time when I meet him before I interview him or whatever, like, who are your, like your top five favorite guitar players? And I swear to goodness, every single one of them, David Gilmore is in their top five. Why? Because his solos are like price, they're like epic and they're melodic and they're slow and the feel is just off the chain. All right. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Click the bell, welcome, good to have you. And also make sure to always check the links down below. There's always something down there. That today there's the membership, so check that out. So anyways, what is the Gilmore approach? Well, I'm gonna take the comfortably numb solo, the first one, right? And we're gonna kind of use that as an example. Now I haven't played this solo in years, so if the, the phrasing and the bend and the feel is off, and you know. <laughs> I'm trying to do a Gilmore solo. He's like one of the best guitar players ever, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so chord progression is gonna be. Right, so there's a D to A, D to A, and then it goes C to G, C to G, and then in the end is A with a climb, the B to C, G, D. Now I've done a lesson on this, God, it's old too, man. It's like back in the day, but I think I did it okay. I think I did the song just like that. I'm gonna do it again, but if you wanna learn the actual solo, go check it out there. But I'll give you the, the, the rundown of this first solo basically. Now, I'm gonna talk about and you, if you're you know, familiar with the channel, you always hear me talk about the E, A, and the D chord shapes to solo out of. And this solo is the perfect example of that and why I like those three in particular, okay? So an E shape is this big chord, right? It's a D chord, but look at these three fingers. It looks kind of like this E shape, right? Now, always right next door to that shape is the D shape. So think of this note, a D chord has a root on the D string. And so if I were to go like this and then make a D chord, right? I got a D shape. So anytime you see this big, you know, bar chord, that D shape's always right next door. Now, what does that have to do with this solo? Well, I'll show you, check this out. Okay. now. I'm not even gonna tell you what key this is in, but why did that just work? Right, cool little rake, it's an arpeggio. Great place to start, arpeggios, right? Chord shapes, chord tones, all the same thing. Perfect place to start when you're learning how to solo, right? All I've done is I've taken the notes of a D chord and spread them out. The first part was quick, so it's not like a completely obvious arpeggio. If I were to do that, or if David were to do that, right? It's quick and then it hammers on a note. Now, the cool thing about that is a lot of times when we're learning how to chord tone solo, we always default to the root, let's say. Okay, I've got to hit that D note. Well, that, you know, solo doesn't, right? So check that out. That actually lands on the third of the chord. So we got. Now this next part, like why, why choose that? Okay, well you're still in that D, so he always does the half bends. So much emotion in a half bend, right? But this note, the reason he bends to that note is the next chord is an A chord. Okay, so when you hit this, you're bending into this E shape of an A chord, right? You're hitting this note. 
Now again, that's not a root note. That's actually a fifth, okay? So that first like, hello, we're in A is not a root note. It's a fifth, right? Great note. A fifth's a great note because it's almost like a five chord in a one, four, five. You kind of naturally want to go somewhere. It's like, yes, this fits, this works, and I kind of want to go somewhere still. And so we do, right? The next thing he does is he literally walks down an A chord shape. Right? So look, look at this. Okay, so, so far, we've used an E shape of a chord to get that first part. And then the D shape, right? And then check this out. The A, right, all this solo part is right out of an A shape of a chord. And then back to the D shape, and he really sticks it right on that turnaround coming back to the D chord really hits the root note like we are back to D, okay? So that whole first part. Now, since it's been a little bit of time has gone by, you kind of, your, 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 your space is a little bit shorter this time around. But the fact that he sticks with the theme, right? That's another part, reoccurring melody. You wanna develop something that you can remember. Now, I always use these two guys as an example for memorable melodies. Think about how easy like a Brian Adams song, right? His vocal melodies or Green Day, and they're very similar. <laughs> in their approach. I, the guy from Green Day has to be a Brian Adams fan because this phrasing is so similar. But you hear the song one time and the phrasing sticks in your head because they're simple, repeatable phrases with a little tweak at the end, right? So you got... And then that next time... Same thing, but again, you're shorter on space, so he does that bend, and that's the little subtle tweak at the end. And then down the A chord. Now what is happening there? Well, he's going from, right? Now he's going into that other chord, the C chord. Now the cool thing here is he chooses another half bend, which is such an awesome way to create emotion, right? Now when you do that, why that note, right? Well, he's bending into a G note, okay? Now that's out of this, right? There's that C chord right there. And again, not the root note. Right? You're bending into the fifth again. Now when you go down here, right, when he bent, that's part of this. This is, there's a C, right, with an E shape there. That's the third. So you've hit fifth, third, and then down to here. When you go to the G chord, right, he's hitting this note. Well, why? Because there's a G chord right here. All right? So, uh, right? Now that little solo right there, that little part, why did that work? Okay, well he did the, that part again over the C, right? And then over the G, this time he uses the A shape again, right? So we've used the E, the D, and the A shape every single time, right? Out of this iconic killer solo, right? This time walks down the G chord, right? Uses that A shape. And then, uh, I forget. Right. 
right? And so that's over the... Um, right out of the D chord. So, as you see, that's like, that's it, right? That's the perfect way to start. Now, you know, I haven't even talked about a scale. I've just used chord shapes. I've used the notes of the chords, right? So check this out. If I use those D, E, and A shapes, check it out, in little like four fret fragments, I can go all the way down the fretboard and use those notes as my scale, right? I'm using all three of those chords put together in a spot to create notes to solo from, right? So the beginning we had uh, D to A, right? There's D, A. And then if we want to do C to G. Okay, so D shape of the D chord. A shape of the A chord. D shape of the C chord. A shape of the G chord. Then I could go E shape. And I could go back to here. Right? So I could go, uh, oh, actually it's A next. So it's D. Right, with the E shape. There's my A chord, D shape, right? So we got D chord, E shape, A chord, D shape. Then I could go. Or I could go D chord, A chord. Right? C chord, G chord. Then once I get to here, I could go D chord, A chord, right? C, G, back to D. Okay, so <laughs> that was just chord shapes up and down the neck. That's every note you'd ever need to solo perfectly over all of those. So see how those chord shapes fit together and how you can create melodies out of those notes because that's the notes out of the whole chord progression, right? And so that's a way to start. Now, what if I wanted to take that approach and do more of a rock solo, right? That's kind of like emotional, ballad -y kind of thing. What if I just had like a, you know, kind of a rock and roll tune like. <laughs> Okay, so same kind of ideas. I, I'm not hitting an A chord in there, right? But same kind of basic concept. So I don't want to do that. You know, I'm not going to totally pinch David Gilmore and go, but I could go. Use that same idea. Arpeggio, right? Right, the notes right out of that D chord. And I know my next chord's a C chord right here. So I'm going to borrow one of the notes from that shape. Right, so that's. And I could go and use that half bend idea. So I went, that's part of my D chord. D chord. And then that C's coming up. So I'm gonna take the Gilmore approach and bend into that root. Again, C. I'm borrowing a note from my D chord to get down to my C chord again. Right, and then I got, now, cool thing about that note choice is the C chord and the G chord share a note, right? So look at this, E shape, that note, right? And so when I bent into my C, there's a note from my G chord there's a note for my C and my G chord. And then. Right now I could go. Now why does that work? Well, when I came back to the D. All right, so. I 
I can do that, right? And then back in my D or do that the second time around, right? And create that melody, right? We're gonna create that theme and just put a little curveball at the end, right? So think of it like a poem. You got like, you know, if you've ever written poems in an English class, sometimes the poetry goes like A, B, A, B, C, right? And or A, B, A, C at the end, right? And you're creating that, you know, those words that rhyme and then that last one's just a little bit of a curve, right? So. Maybe that's the only difference. It still totally works. Like we we're chilling on that note, right? Which is the fifth. And then now maybe at the very end of the solo, I want to really hit home and hit the root. <laughs> there we go. Right? So it's just a way of really slowing down and, and taking those A, D, and E chord shapes, right? That's probably the best place to start. I mean, the scales are great you know, and, and they're really, they help you get around. But to me, like, you know, I could do, play anything I wanted to forever and I knew all the scale shapes I'd ever need to know, but I just kind of defaulted to shape playing, you know, and not really uh, melodic playing. And when somebody showed me the cage system, I was like, oh my God, uh, this is incredible. And I was like, well, man, I could just solo out of these three shapes. And when I started, you know, analyzing all the solos I was teaching on YouTube, I'm like, God, so many of these are just using the E, A, and D shapes of these chords to solo out of, Gilmore especially, all day and all night, right, using those chord shapes. So that's a really effective way. So try using the chord shapes and don't just play the arpeggios like a, a normal arpeggio. That has a, you know, a place and a time, but like doing that. Right, like a rake. You get all of the notes really quickly out of the way and then you can milk a note. And then maybe come up to the next version of that chord. Because in this instance, root. And then when I go here, third. So you get two times where you're hanging on different notes of the chord played in a different way. One's got a half bend in there, kind of milk in the feel. The other one's got a rake hitting all of the chord tones really quickly, but you're defaulting back to thinking like a vocalist, right? You don't want to be like, you know, some, sometimes you listen to RB and they're like, ooh, 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 you know, like Mariah Carey or like Boys Demit. Now they're all fantastic singers. So I'm not knocking them, but you can hear how they run through scales sometimes, but a majority of their Phrasing is slow notes, right? And that gives your ear and, and, and thematic notes, melodic repetition, right? And that's what really develops soloing to a higher degree is you got to think of it as a story. Even blues playing, B.B. King, all these incredible blues artists. Yeah, they're playing a blues scale, but you're not hearing a blues scale. You're hearing vocal like phrasing and they just happen to be using that because that's kind of the scale everybody uses but if you've gone to any blues jam and seen you know really experienced players and really um you know more novice players you can hear when somebody's playing out of a scale and then you can hear when someone's using a scale melodically now, the best way to start to become melodic, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, is try just thinking about chords first, playing out of chord shapes first. And you're going to realize, oh, I'm playing out of the scale anyways, but the approach is different. You're playing where the scale isn't the most important thing. It's the chords and the notes of the chords. So take any chord progression and try to find those E and D shapes of those chords 
and then solo out of them. Like if we, you know, went from, did that chord progression, and then maybe there's a bridge. Like what would we do? E chord. Okay, well I think, okay. I could do that, and why did I choose that? Well, here's my chord, right? Like, this is the A shape, even though it's a minor. That's the root, third, and then bending up. I'm hitting the fifth. I just did every note of that E minor chord. And right in the next chord. Right, so. Or I could go over that C. Right, that's bending into the fifth and the third. Right, and this is out of the D chord. And then maybe it's. Throw in a different chord. So we got. Move it back. Now, I could have just chilled on that note because again, here's the, I could go and hit that D chord. Third, root. Right, bending into that chord shape. Kind of an arpeggio. Or I could go. Right, so that would have been. Right, and that would cover for the E minor and the C. Right, back to the E minor. There's my E chord. back to my D. Okay, so that's what I do. I mean, that's how I uh, how I start to, you know, any of my courses, any of that kind of stuff. I try not to think about scales anymore. I try to concentrate on melody development first. And then when I want to add some flash or something like that, maybe a fast run or, you know, do like some, you know, mixing major and minor work. <laughs> that kind of stuff, I'll use the scale as a way to kind of like move around in a flashy or whatever, you know, build excitement in that sort of way. And I'll typically use scales then to kind of get around or transition from spot to spot, but always focusing on those chord tones. So that's the way I, you know, develop melodies. I analyze solos. Gilmore's really great for that. And that's why I took the Gilmore approach today in this lesson is because if you want to really analyze how to solo melodically, he's really tough to beat. Like in a blues rock kind of context, if you're a fan of classic rock and that kind of stuff, Joe Walsh, the Eagles, really take that chord tone approach in those three shapes, the E, A, and D shapes, and analyze those solos. And then you'll be like, oh my God, they're doing it. <laughs> it's like, and you'll notice that like that becomes the key and that you've always had the ability to be able to do it. You just needed a tool to, or a key to unlock that door. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Again, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell to be notified when the newest videos come out. And also if you want to support the cause and you love the free videos or want to do a deeper dive, check out down below. There's brettpapa.com. I'll put a link to the membership. There's over 700 videos in there 
to help you get better at playing guitar. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the support. We'll catch you next time.